Greg, uh, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, congratulations on Space Force. Steve Carell said Netflix had this premise that they thought might make a funny show about the origin, origins of a fictitious Space Force. There was no show, no, no idea, just the title. He approaches you. He says, you want to do a show called Space Force? You just go, let's do it. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, he could have told me that the show, you know, was about two guys that sit on a couch under a tree and, and you know, read the Bible together. And I would have been, yeah, that's great. I mean, I love Steve Carell, right? He's, he is, he was my favorite work experience uh, doing the office remake with him. Um, so I pretty much would go anywhere that he suggested, but I actually think that the, um, the concept is great because, you know, uh, um, the, uh, the central character that he plays is under so much pressure, you know, the, the, um, the goal that he has is boots on the moon by 2024, which is incredibly audacious and implausible goal. Um, and so when you picture the character traits needed to pull that off, uh, you know, and you picture this guy with his entire career in the military suddenly having to be very science literate and, and flexible and creative, it's just like a funny character in a funny situation. Um, so it was very easy to picture Steve doing it uh, at this stage in his life. He has kind of the bearing of a, uh, of a general, I think. And, um, <laughs> uh, and so we had a lot of fun just figuring out the other characters in his world, uh, John Malkovich to be the head scientist. And, you know, he's married to Lisa Kudrow and is, he has to relate to the media. He's, he's suddenly have to, having to tweet as the head general of a new agency and Ben Schwartz is his media manager you know, and uh, he has a he has a daughter, Diana Silvers, and like we just sort of built the world out. Managed to find all these wonderful performers to to fill it up. It's so much fun, and it's do you know what? It was really nice to get excited about space again and the moon landing. But I never thought about it. You've said um, that yes, it's about space, but it's really about fixing the Earth, and that's something I had never thought about. Well, I mean, I think that. Um, you know, when you think about how much technology we use today was was kicked off by the NASA uh, space race, you know, and there are various moments in the show where he as a general is forced to defend the expenditure on the Space Force. And uh, I think the way to think about it is the more uh, science advances, you just have to keep in the back of your head that it needs to have a, a bearing on our life on Earth because you know, when, when we went to outer space and turned around and looked back at the earth and saw how beautiful it was, that was the symbol that kind of kicked off Earth Day and the environmental movement. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people are sort of dreaming of, of, of we're, we're eventually going to move to, the, to Mars or something, but we're not going to move to Mars. <laughs> you know, there's really only one planet that we can live on here. And it's beautiful you know, and, and suited for our species because we grew up here. So we really have to be reminded, I think, that the moon is not like it's pretty when it's hanging in the sky and you're, yeah. you're sitting on Earth, but you don't want to live there. Um, this really is uh, fiction, but you had to be pinching yourself last week when Trump made the announcement of the, the Space Force. Is that part of your marketing campaign, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing about the flag that they put out was, um, you know, we had to develop all of our own graphic design because obviously we shot the show last year and, you know, we, we, we came up with our own camouflage fatigues, which we thought was very funny, you know, that it would, it would look like the surface of the moon. And, uh, and then Space Force came out with their camouflage fatigues, which were jungle pattern, <laughs> which was, <laughs> uh, you know, a more absurdist joke than we ever would have thought of and then when they came out with their flag uh we had seen a design my you know production designer susie mancini had come come, come up with a lot of different designs for a space force flag and we'd seen one that looked a lot like that but we rejected it as being too star trek <laughs> but they used it so <laughs> so it is fun to see the, the the two you know parallel design teams uh working on the same project it's hilarious. Um, I like that uh, this this goes into a lot of, you know, it's about breaking the rules, taking risks. You have had such a successful career. Is there any time where you presented one of your shows and people went, 
no. And he just went, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to break the rules, do it my way and make it happen. Um, well, you know, I would say that I'm often in the position, um, or at least I was with the Office and Parks and Recreation, of arguing to, you know, keep something on the air that started off a little shaky. And um, my argument is always it's a character comedy. You have to get to know who the characters are to really fall in love with the show. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think we, we aimed at a character comedy here as well. But uh, there is certainly a... Um, a joy in assembling these this many you know top level comedy people it's yeah. kind of reminds me of that old movie it's a mad 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 world where they just had everybody in it and th there is something super fun about that and uh, i think we were also very supported by netflix we were able to uh you know tell a very big story in a very cinematic way and you know we got for instance we got uh, carter burwell to do the music it's wonderful composer, you know, and he had a full orchestra, which is, you know, wow. very, very few times nowadays do you get those kind of resources to put into a show. So they were terrific and very supportive. And we, we you know, used it uh, to the max. Um, I could talk to you forever, but I have to wrap. So I'm going to end with this question. Is there going to be a season two? Well, we're working on it. The writers are together working on it. We haven't got an order yet, but we're, we're quite hopeful. And, um, you know, we we definitely left certain characters in limbo at the end of season one. So <laughs> we yes, we're, I, we're definitely thinking about a season two. I'm desperate to know Lisa Kudrow's character's backstory. I'm going to leave it there because I'm not going to put out any spoilers, but desperate <laughs> to know how she's gotten herself into the position she's getting herself <laughs> yes. into. <laughs> yes, that's a fun aspect. We're enjoying talking about that as well. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Greg, such a joy to chat to you. Hopefully I'm talking to you for season two soon. Oh, I, well, that would be lovely. Thank you very much.